In today's video, we're going to be going over VTO DMSS license. Now, the video is going to be going into detail of the licenses and the step by step on how to get everything set up. So, I'll be adding chapter cards to this video. You can go ahead and hover over the timeline and go to a specific topic you would like to jump to directly. But we'll start off with the explanation of VTO DMSS license. Now, the VTO DMS license is the base license for our apartment video intercom. Now, the stock firmware out of the box, it would not be able to dial to a DMSS phone. But with the VTO DMSS license, you'll be able to do that with a custom firmware. Now, each VTO DMS license can only call one DMSS, so you would have to purchase the amount of licenses for the amount of smartphones that you'll be setting up. Once you have purchased licenses, you'll receive an email with two firmware files. Now, you won't be seeing the firmware files named like this. For you, you'll be seeing one way or another labeled as one or two. Um, it might have a long name, it might have your order number, but you'll have them labeled as one and two. My recommendation is renaming it in case there's any special characters you don't want it to fail, renaming it to one, and two. Throw them into a folder like I did into your desktop or any other directory on your PC because we will be using those files to flash onto the system. Now, out of the box, it's going to be uninitialized. So the first thing we're going to want to do is initialize them. There's two ways you can do this, either logging into the web interface or using config tool. I personally like logging to the, like logging into the web interface. So I'll go ahead and open up Chrome or any other browser you would like and log into the unit itself. Now, this VTO is IP address 250, so I'll go ahead and type that in. You might you might see something different. The default IP is usually 192.168.1.110 or 108. And you could always use config tool to search for that IP address. I'm gonna go ahead and just do admin 123 just for this video. No email just for this video, just so we can kind of speed up the process here so it's not too long. And let's go ahead and log into the web interface. So our first goal is to upgrade those files that we just received. And to do so, we want to go to local settings. We're going to want to go to fake it layout and select that little green arrow up. This will allow you to bring up the firmware version the serial number and information. So let's go ahead and hit browse for import file. I have the files on my desktop, so I'm gonna go ahead and select desktop. And then we're gonna grab the first file and we're gonna go ahead and flash it. Now this will take a little bit of time. Um, it will take around one to two minutes to update. And then once it updates, it's gonna reboot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video here just because it does take quite a bit. And upon reboot, it, you will get a really loud tamper alarm to go off. So I'll go ahead and pause the video now and then resume it once it's finished rebooting. Okay, so the unit just rebooted. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna refresh the page and log in again, because now we're gonna flash the second firmware file. We're gonna go to the same spot, local settings, vacate layout, select a little arrow, and then browse for the second file. I'm gonna wait for it to fully send the file over and then finalize the installation. And again, I'll pause the video and restart it as soon as it does. The second file just finished flashing and the device just rebooted. Now, the most important thing after flashing the firmware is we want to make sure we factory default the system so it runs fresh on that firmware. If you don't, you'll most likely not see the options to be able to get this special serialized code for DMSS. So we're going to want to go back into the web interface after the second update is complete. And we're going to want to factory default the system. We're going to hit factory defaults on the top right. Enter the password 
and then hit OK. Don't hit enter because it might kick you out of the web interface. Go ahead and hit OK. And then confirm it. Again, the unit's going to reboot. Once it reboots, I'll go ahead and continue the video again. Okay, the final reboot should be done. Uh, we now factory defaulted the system. Let's go ahead and refresh config tool. It's going to be again uninitialized, so we're going to have to log in to the web interface, reinitialize the system, and now we can get started. Um, but now that it's running fresh on this custom firmware, we should be able to get that custom QR code to add to DMSS. Let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, we'll go ahead and initialize it through config tool in case anyone wanted to see how that was done. So we'll go ahead and hit that little checkbox, hit initialize, hit initialize again, select the password. I'll go ahead and do admin123. Again, I'm not going to do the email just to speed up the process here. Um, the device will get then get initialized. Once we refresh, we'll see that now the status is initialized with that same IP address. So now what we're going to want to do is open up the web interface for this unit, log into it. And now we want to get added to DMSS. But before doing so, we need to add users. Um, these users are going to be used for adding to DMSS. So the login credentials we're going to be setting up and the users we're going to be setting up is going to be for DMSS. We're going to want to go to household settings. We're going to want to go to VTH management. And here we're going to be creating rooms. Now, each one of these rooms is going to be for it's going to be used for, specialized for the QR code. So it's kind of a, an intermediate uh, for the call. So we're going to go ahead and hit add. Now I'm going to start the room number as 101. You can always give it a name, a last name, or a nickname if you want to identify who this is going to be to. Um, I'm going to leave it blank for now, but all you really need to do for now is enter the room number. Registration password is always going to be 123456. But I recommend just leaving a default. Just don't touch that. Just enter a room number you would like. Um, once that room number is complete, we can go ahead and hit that little pencil icon again and add the user. This is going to be the user or the login information we'll be adding to DMSS once we get to that section. Uh, for this, we'll be using, I'll just add my name, Will, and password, I'll do, again, admin123. Or we can switch it up. We'll do admin three, two, one. One hit save. So here it will show you the status of the subscription status. Not subscribed means we're not subscribed in order to receive that call. But once we go into DMSS, we'll go ahead and subscribe and that status should change. Now we'll hit save. Okay. Once the user is created, we can now go ahead and create that specialized QR code by clicking on this gear icon. With this QR code, we'll now be able to scan it on DMSS, and it's going to be pointing towards the room number 101. So you want to make sure you use a QR code here on the gear icon and make sure you're not using the actual serial number of the unit itself because this won't point towards the room number. You want to make sure you click on under VTH management and click on that gear icon. It is very important you use this gear icon. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my phone. So you guys can see the screen for DMSS. DMSS, and I'll go ahead and switch my camera over to my phone. Okay, so now that DMSS is opened, we're gonna to wanna to click on the plus icon, hit serial number scan, and you wanna scan that QR code. Now. Sometimes, depending on your monitor, it might take a little, a little adjusting to or moving around, but once you get that QR code, it'll send you that serial number. We're going to go ahead and hit next once it detects it. And now the most important thing is making sure this room number all the way here in the bottom shows the correct room number you're going to be using. So if you have multiple room numbers or multiple users, you want to make sure that it's pointing towards the correct room number or else they won't get the call. Or when you try to enter the login credentials, it will say user does not exist. 
So I know that room number 101, I created a user called Will with the password admin321. So I'll go ahead and type that information in now. Uh, for device name, I'll call this something like front VTL or something like that. Username, it's not going to be admin, it's going to be Will because that's the user I just created. Device password is going to be admin321. Make sure that's correct. And then we're going to hit save. So this actually goes and logs into the unit now. And we can we can go ahead and start initiating calls. But in order for it to push towards to the DMSS to receive action actual phone call or push notification, you want to go into the, the device details. And by doing so, you want to click on the three horizontal dots. Go into device details. Under notifications, go, to, go into that menu. And you're going to want to flip that switch. Make sure that it's on. Uh, here you have an options to change the period um, of the notifications you want to receive. So if you only want to receive it during night nighttime hours or when you're away from home, you can go ahead and select that. But I'm just going to leave it 24-7. I'm going to go ahead and hit save now. Make sure that it's completely saved. Subscribe successfully. So we should be good. Now I'm going to quickly switch over to my main monitor again. And we should actually see the status of the user say subscribe now. If it doesn't, it's fine. Um, sometimes it takes a little while to update, but now we know that the call is going to go through. Okay, so since this is a modular unit, um, I do have uh, modules hooked up to this unit. I'm going to go ahead and select the one that I have, which is what I like to call the speed dial. And here we can program the buttons. Um, I already have a room number called 101, so I'm going to go ahead and configure that as 101, and I can just tap on that button, and then it should call 101, which in turn, it should also call my my phone. So I'm going to go ahead and save that or confirm it, switch over to my phone, and if I press that button, now. I should get the phone call. Here I can go ahead and answer it, or I can end it, or, you know, I'm going to go ahead and answer it and open up the door. And there it is. That's pretty much it. Um, that's the steps from start to finish. Uh, if you do want to add more users, then at that point, you would want to go back to your VTO. And if you had purchased five licenses or, or for, for five users or for five smartphones, you can do one or two things. You can go into back into VTH management, create four more rooms for your five users, or you can actually add more users within uh, the same room number. So if I wanted to add another user here, uh, maybe we can call this guest or you know a specific other name. You can go ahead and create a user here. I'll do this in admin one, two, three, and you'll be able to add multiple users per room. Uh, if you didn't want to do that, if you just wanted to have another room, you can switch this over to 102 and then create another user within 102. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Um, I hope this video was informative and kind of explained a little bit of how the process worked. Uh, any other questions, please do call our DAO tech support.